Welcome back to LabVIEW Basics. I'm Sam Kristoff from LabVIEW Maker Hub, and in this section we'll talk about case structures. A case structure is a LabVIEW structure that lets you selectively execute portions of code. So let's jump into LabVIEW and see how we can use case structures. I'll press Ctrl N to create a new VI and switch to the block diagram. I'll right click to bring up the functions palette and then choose structures and case structure. Then I'll click and drag on the block diagram to create my case structure. A case structure has multiple sub diagrams or cases. By default, they're tied to booleans, true or false. Here you can see the true case. And if I click on the case selector at the top, we can switch to the false case and they both start empty. On the left is the case selector. And this is the value that determines which one of these sub diagrams executes. I'll right click on this and create a control. And then inside the false case, I'll place a one button dialog with a message that says false. And I'll copy that and switch to my true case and paste it and change it to true. Now, when I look at my front panel, all I have is my Boolean and right now it's set to false. So when I run the VI, I get a pop-up that says false. If I switch it to true and run the VI, I get a pop-up that says true. So when a case structure executes, only one case executes and it's determined by the case selector value. Rather than using a Boolean, we could use a numeric. So if I attach a numeric constant to the case selector, you'll notice the selector label changes now, zero and one instead of true and false. And there's a default case. Every possible case for your input type needs to be handled by the case structure. So the default case says, use this case if there's not one explicitly listed for the value at runtime. So for example, if I change this to a control and I'll change my values to one and zero. Now when I switch to the front panel, I can run my VI and with a value of zero, I get zero. I'll change the value to one and run it again. And I get a dialog box that says one. And now if I change it to three, I don't have a case that handles three. So the default case will be used, which is zero. Just like other structures in LabVIEW, you can pass data into and out of case structures using tunnels. So for example, if I have a numeric constant, I can wire it inside the case structure to use it in a specific case. So let me create an indicator in my default case. Now, if I switch to my other case, the value is still being passed into the case structure, but I'm not doing anything with it here. The same thing works on the output side. You can use tunnels to pass data out of the case structure as well. In the next section, we'll talk about creating modular code. Make sure to check out labviewmakerhub.com for more tutorials and projects and ask any questions you have on the MakerHub forums at labviewmakerhub.com forums.